Welcome to the 6 o'clock news. I am Ben there. And I'm done that. And here are tonight's top stories. Many of you know the prohibition movement that began in the late 1840s. Most pro prohibitionists wanted abstinence or alcohol to be banned for sale or consumption. This movement gained ground in the 1870s when it began as a political party. In 1881, Carrie Nation began scolding customers and used her hatchet to destroy bottles of liquor. This just in. A man has been apprehended from drinking alcohol outside the studio. Our news team has secret footage of the scene. Take a look. Prohibitionists got what they wanted in the early 20th century by the passage of the 18th Amendment. This amendment saw that alcohol would be banned and it wouldn't be sold, America would become dry. These, pe these supporters were mainly middle class women by the emerging middle class because work and the status of life was becoming better. Although alcoholic drinks were not illegal in the surrounding countries, this made it very easy for people called bootleggers to get alcohol into the country. The 18th Amendment was repealed by the 21st Amendment in 1933, ending the era of Prohibition. Prohibition today is non-existent. You can go down downtown and buy a bottle of beer if you're over 21. And now, over to Dawn. Okay, let's talk about the jazz movement. Da 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 da! By 1808, the Atlantic slave trade had brought almost half a million Africans to the United States, who brought strong tribal music, musical traditions with them. And later, in the early 19th century, black musicians learned to play European instruments, such as the violin. And it wouldn't have been for the abolition of slavery that opened new opportunities and education for freed African Americans. Um, that taught them a low that brought them low class entertainment at dances and minstrel shows, and um, black pianists played in bars, clubs, bottles, and ragtime. And one of the classical pian pianists was Scott Joplin, who produces original rags, Mayfield leaf rag, and the Entertainer. And later, the brass and reeds um, became the basic instruments of jazz. And with the Af afro creole and African-American musicians um, helped to spread jazz to western and northern U U.S. cities. And now, back to you, Ben. The jazz was revived in, during the 1950s with such big bands as Louis Armstrong and Nat King Cole. Jazz today is still around as we have our own Poway High School jazz band and such as Gordon Goodwin's Big Fat Band are still influenced by the 1920 black musician jazz bands. That is all the time we have. Tune in exactly one minute for the exact same thing. Good night.